Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench. And in this tutorial, we're going to revisit something that we did before using WaveWorld to make a 3D terrain. We're going to add some audio to it this time and make a 3D visualizer. So let's check it out. All right, so this is what we're going to be making. You can see this is pretty similar to a tutorial we've done before. If you've seen that one, it's called Free 3 Terrain. If not, I'll link it down below. But the difference is that in this one, we've linked up audio to affect the wave world. So it's better to use trap code sound keys to do this, but you can also do this with just vanilla AE. And so here's a couple of examples of those. So as we go through these, note that these are a little bit bigger than our main comp because the wave world effect builds this stuff based off of comp size. So you'll probably want it to be a little bit larger than your main comp. This is a little bit different section of the song. Let's back this up. Start here. So the first attempt, a little weak. Second attempt is a little bit better. You can see with this, reflects a little bit more of the audio. And there's ways to tweak which parts that you use. I'll link another video down below that'll actually go through that a little bit more in depth. And you can see how this one's set up. Let's play that. I came from the moon, just stood on my hand. So that's what it looks like if you use just vanilla AE. So that's basically just converting the audio to keyframes and using those things to drive amplitude and frequency inside of Wave World. Once you have that data, the process afterwards is pretty much the same. You just have a lot more control with Trapcode. Also, Trapcode can give you normalized output. Whereas if you use audio amplitude, you're going to have to look at the graph and determine what you should be dividing by so that you can multiply an amplitude or a frequency. I'll leave a few links below so you can see more about how to do this in vanilla AE. So let's take a look at the trap code example so you can see how the rest of it's set up. So these are just the first kind of iterations of me testing things out to try to get the look to match kind of the audio quality of the track. So this is the final version that I ended up with. I tried out a bunch of different things. As you can see, some of the things are turned off, like this wave speed thing is turned off. So I tried to make it to where if the voice was a lot louder, it would slow down the waves. So it kind of compresses it into a bigger piece, I guess. And while it worked, I didn't really like it that much, so I turned it off. And just if you're curious, the sound keys is set up like this. I have basically one big hit for the voice. And as his voice kind of goes through the hold part where he kind of like holds whatever note that he's on, it kind of transitions into this area. So that kind of is added in here. That's what this trough is in this wave. So since it's easier to split different frequencies, we can kind of control this a lot better with sound keys. So let's turn that off. The only other thing out of here is I'm exporting a zero to one range out of both of those so that I can multiply things easily. So I just take the data that we have from there and I multiply it by a slider setup that I have in here in the controller. So I have an amplitude and a frequency multiplier. So I can kind of control all of this at once without having to go through and change all these values. So all we're doing is setting up for amplitude, the amp is equal to that multiplier slider. And we're going to multiply that by our data from the first range of the sound keys effect. So the same thing goes for frequency. It's the exact same stuff, except for we're just picking the other slider in our controller. And then the second producer in wave world, We've got the same thing, except for it is set to output two so that we have that other range to make this trough. One of the producers is a ring and the other one is a line. You're going to have to tweak all of these settings depending on the audio that you use, but this will at least make the movement look right. So in my wave world, I've set this thing up, rotated in the direction that I wanted it. I have this height map contrast set to zero so that parts of these things disappear. You can see there's this line around here. You just set that contrast to zero and it goes away. You can also set the transparency to zero as well if you want to. All of your simulation controls, you can change on your own. You can make this thing have a lot more resolution if you want to, if you actually put the right number of zeros in your text. So it's kind of interesting looking, although it doesn't entirely fit with the look I was making. It's a little too bright. You can change your uh, glows and all that kind of stuff to make that work better, but eh, I liked it better less. So one thing to note is that you can have your ground here. Uh, let me turn this extract off. This is how we did this before. You can actually push this ground further down to where you don't see it, but I kind of wanted it to affect it a little bit. I have a fractal noise on this thing with block just to change it up a little bit, make it not exactly sterile. You can set this to none if you want. It doesn't really affect it too much, at least with the version that I've set up, although it can do a lot to it. Especially if you bring this stuff up, like the height, as you can see if you don't go too far past it, it can change 
the way everything animates. One thing to note, don't set this to zero because if you do, sometimes you'll get weird spikes because it kind of can just do whatever it wants. So we just have that set to 0.1. At certain angles, this can go away if you have it set really low so that you don't have to extract, but it's just easier just to extract the color out. Turn on extract, set the channel to green, and then bring the black point in a good bit. And I had a fill here, which I don't need anymore because I'm doing that in the look comp. If you want to see exactly how I set up Wave World here, you can go and grab our project file off our website for a dollar. The only thing is we don't have the audio file in there because I can't distribute it. So let's take a quick look at how the overall look is built because people always ask about that. So let's check it out. So we have some elements in here from Glitch Lord, Data, and UI. All the little different things in here. You can kind of see if we turn this guy off, you can see what they look like a little bit more clearly, which is a segue to our sponsor, which is Element Supply Company. So if you want to get a bunch of elements like these, you can go to elementsupply.co. So after all those things are put on here, we have a background that has a little bit of noise, just set to noise HLS so it doesn't really animate. You just have 10% on lightness and it's set to grain. Then after that, we have an adjustment layer on top of everything. We have a hue sat to bring this back because when you glow things, a lot of times this gets to be like an almost neon yellow. So I bring it back a little bit into the red. We have a camera lens blur that's looking at a blur map that looks like this to get a nice depth of field in here. And turn this off. We have S glow, which I normally set pretty wide just to get kind of a nice subtle glow overall, but I kind of like how it pops out these elements. If this is a little bit wider, we kind of lose that. And, uh, you know, just want it to be a little bit more localized to the whole thing. Then on top of that, we have red giant universe, chromatic aberration, and you can see it's only subtly applying to some of these things, but a lot on here. And that's because I have a copy of that also on the yellow wave. So after that, we have an element from Corona also from element supply, which gives us this glow above everything. And on top of that, we have a LUT from our LUTs pack. And that's it. I hope you guys made some cool work with this. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe because we're not posting weekly anymore. So it's a little harder to figure out when that's going to be. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out workbench.tv slash support. And while you're there, check out the blog. And as always, I'm Joe and we'll see you next time. Bye.